any remotely techie computer user has probably heard the name CPUZ. It is this ancient piece of freeware for verifying your system specifications. I used it quite frequently, and it is a very, very popular application. And when I moved over to Linux, it is one of those tools that I really did miss. And sure, there is a bunch of other tools for getting the same sort of data, and I've covered a lot of them on this channel, but none of them presented it in the same way. And it turns out, a clone of CPU-Z was hiding in plain sight. This is CPU-X. By default, when you just run the binary, it'll open up in its GUI mode. This being in GTK3, but there are two other modes available as well. So we also have the TUI mode. That is going to be on the dash N option. That looks like this right here. It's basically just a TUI version of the exact same application. You can check the help page with the H key, but it's nothing really that complex. Pretty much all that matters is the arrow keys. So the left and the right arrow key will go through each of the different tabs. And then if the tab has a setting that can be made, for example, on the CPU tab, if I had multiple CPUs available, I could cycle through the CPUs with the up and the down arrow keys. Same with things like the graphics tabs and things like that. But in my case, I don't have anything to set there. And the other option we have is the dump mode. So if you open this up, but instead use the capital D option, this will basically dump out all of the information right onto your screen. So if you want to go and pause this in some various application, or you just want to go and read the information, it's all going to be here. Now, obviously, visually, it looks a bit different. This is a GTK3 app, so it's running with my GTK3 theme. But as for the information it provides, it provides most of the same info. We have the CPU tab here, we have the caches, motherboard, system. I believe system might be a new one specifically for the CPUX implementation. We have graphics, we have the benchmark section, which I didn't realize that CPU-Z actually had, but both these applications have a built-in benchmark. It's not a, you know, a super complex benchmark, but if you want to make sure things are functioning properly, it at least does enough there. So while providing pretty much the same information provided in CPU-Z, it provides some Linux-specific information. Like on the system tab here, we have things like my Linux kernel, my distribution, my host name, and things like that. As I mentioned with the TUI version, in places like the CPU, the graphics card, the caches, if there are extra things we can go and select, there is going to be the option to do so. In the GUI, it is going to be in this drop-down menu. Like I said, I only have one GPU. But with the CPU, you actually can go and select the individual cores. So right now, I'm on core 0, this is in socket 1, this is a 6-core CPU with 12 threads. But let's say I want to look at like core... 7 for example, it's going to swap over to that and start showing me the data inside of the interface here. But you may have noticed a slight issue. Firstly, the multiplier and the bus speed aren't being shown on any of the cores there. And also, there's a missing tab. There's nothing here about my system memory. And that's on purpose because you're not actually able to get that data without having root access. Both the app and the readme don't really make it clear why that is the case, but they do both mention the daemon. So the way you actually get that information is you have to make sure this daemon is being run. So if I go and enter my password here, now upon authenticating it, the extra information is being shown. So we have that multiplier, we have the bus speed, and now I have my memory specs as well. Bank 0 and bank 2 are both empty, but bank 1 and 3 have modules in them. We have the module size, we have the memory speed, we have the type of module, basically the information you would expect to be there. Now, if you're using a window manager like I am, you're going to notice that starting the daemon doesn't actually work. What's going to happen is you're going to see a really weird error. It's going to be an error like this here. PK exec authorization could not be obtained, not authorized. I've made a video on how to address this bug. It's a problem with window managers not shipping their own Polkit agent. If you're running this on a desktop environment like GNOME, KDE, pretty much anything else out there, this bug is not going to occur. 
Now, this project has been around for a very long time, and as such, is going to be available in many places. Whether it's Debian, Fedora, FreeBSD, OpenMandriva, Solus, Ubuntu, the AUR, Genji Overlay, Slackware, or you can even go and get one of the releases from the GitHub. Now, the dev is still, like, kind of maintaining this, doing a bit of work here and there, making some minor changes if there is a bug with the application. But he has no plans for doing any major reworks. For example, a GTK4 version probably isn't going to happen into the future. It's going to stay a GTK3 application unless someone wants to go and redo it themselves. He's sort of gotten to the point where it's basically feature complete and that's that. I think that's fine. He's still addressing the bugs with it and it does everything it needs to be doing. It works right now. Whether it's going to work in the future is a whole nother question. To be honest, the application is feature complete. It's set out to be a clone of CPU-Z, and it's achieved that. So there's not really any reason to keep adding more and more things. It does what it needs to be doing. Honestly, I wish I discovered this tool a long, long time ago. I have lost track of how many times somebody has asked me about some random piece of hardware on my system. I don't know what I'm running. I built my system like three years ago. It has the things in it, and that is that. Maybe this will help me actually remember the hardware I'm using in my system. And maybe I'll have some like, and maybe I'll have to do some hardware verification of the future, and this will help out as well. So did you already know about CPUX, or have you wanted a CPU-Z clone available on Linux? I know that I have, but I would love to hear your thoughts as well. So let me know in the comment section down below, and if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. If you really like the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, subscribe, and verify the link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me. This video took me basically no time to record, and that's very rare. So, I'm out. <laughs>